Hi there, this is Anna Prosser for Kingston HyperX, sitting here with Greg Idrafields. We're catching a brief bite to eat after the tournament has ended for some of the EG players. And uh, we are here at MLG Providence 2011, the National Championships. Greg, can you give us a brief rundown and maybe some highlights of, of your best matches, your worst matches, what we should look out for in summary of this tournament? Well, since I was seated really high, it was a pretty short tournament. I only played three matches. I lost to MC in just pretty bad games. Um, I beat Puma. The loss was silly, but the two wins were pretty nice games. Really long, drawn out, lots of multitasking, big games. Uh, and then I lost to Lenoch in two. Uh, one was a coin flip, and the other one I just made a bad decision. So um, not really much of a tournament for me. The games against Lenoch were fairly short. Can you tell us uh, about your decisions to GG those games? First game, it was just a coin flip. He went hatch first and then like pool, no, hatch first then gas pool on 18, which is like stupid greedy. But I wasn't doing a pressure build, so he got away with it. And then he followed up with pure speedling, which again, just flat out dies if I make a baneling. Um, so yeah, he just played really greedy and risky and got away with it, and that was it. And then the second game, a Mutalink Speedbane beats Roach Hydra if Roach Hydra doesn't have a big kind of advantage early, let you go Hydra and Infester. So he did that weird Link Bane timing when I thought he was just going straight to Muta. He killed my third base, and that was kind of the end of it. Like, um, I don't know. ZVZ is just really coin flippy. If I do a Roach timing, then the Muta dies. But if you don't do the Roach timing, then the Muta is better. But Muta is still pretty fragile. It's just a shit matchup. So how are you feeling after this tournament? Do you feel like you played well and it just kind of didn't work out as well as you planned, or do you feel like disappointed? Uh, disappointed, obviously. You're disappointed anytime you don't win. Uh, my ZVT games were good. I don't really feel comfortable with ZVP. I think the matchup's hard, and I think I don't have a great handle on it. Um, those games weren't too great, and yeah, the ZVCs were stupid. I mean, I guess the games for Snesty were nice at least. Well, I know that once you, when you did GG to Lenoch, your fans were still shouting, Idra, Idra, and they cheer when you come out of the booth. Does that help, or does it still just feel terrible when after you're losing? No, at that point, nothing really gets through. <laughs> All right, well, you do have a lot of fans that adore you. You have a lot of support that keeps growing and growing every tournament. Do you enjoy interacting with your fans? Have they been good supporters for you? Uh, yeah, they're, they're awesome. Um, there's just tons of them. They're really enthusiastic, which is nice. Um, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> That's great. Does it ever get overwhelming when they are, are asking for your attention? Oh, sure. I think um, yesterday I actually stood there for like 40 minutes because I had 12 hours before my match. I just had nothing to do. I think I actually stood there for 40 minutes going through a line of signatures and uh, photos and just people randomly finding me. Because whenever you stand still uh, and do one, then a group starts and it keeps growing and growing. So, yeah, there's a ton of them, but, you know, it's part of the job. Well, it's probably a good problem to have. I mean, thinking back to even the Brood War days and the beginning of MLG for StarCraft II, can you comment on the growth that you've seen as somebody who's been here kind of since the beginning? Well, the growth in StarCraft One is incredible. In StarCraft One, we'd go to, like, WCG National Finals and have bleachers and have, like, five people in them, and it was actually depressing. Like, it'd be better if there was no one there. It just looks silly. Um, and the first MLG, um, even then, it was already a pretty big growth. Like, I remember walking out after I'd won it, uh, just walking out to do an interview or something, and a whole crowd of 100 people following me. That was pretty cool. But now, you just have thousands and thousands of people. Like, the audience is full 30 minutes into the first day for the preliminary matches. Um, it was just absolutely mind-boggling. Considering those changes, now we're looking at a new year. You know, December is a, a bit of a down month competition-wise for some people. I don't know, is it for you? Now I got NASL and WCG and maybe that Blizzard Cup thingy if I qualify for it. So you don't get much rest either way, but at least there's no MLGs in this yeah. next month. And we're coming into a new calendar year, so looking forward, what are you kind of going to be the direction that StarCraft goes, or maybe even next year at this same time, what will we be seeing? I think in the U.S. it'll definitely keep growing. MLG and IPL are both really, really good organizations who are doing a lot for esports and really intent on growth. And I think the competition there is going to keep spurring each other forward. I mean, they're good organizations anyway, but the competition will help that along greatly. Uh, Europe, I'm a little bit more nervous about. I know DreamHack and IEM, they're good events, but they also have a lot of problems. And I'm not sure if really the enthusiasm is there. Like, nothing compares to MLG fans. Um, and IPL has, obviously, it has IGN and then News Corp or whatever's money behind it. So that's a lot of potential there as well. And Korea, obviously, with Kespa switching over, I think that would be big, too. So, yeah, Korea and U.S., I see just continuing this level of growth, if not more. Soon you are heading over to Korea for three months, is that right? Uh, potentially. We'll see when MLG and IPL start, if I, if I get pulled back for that. So you have been to Korea before. You spent a large amount of time there. Knowing what it's like, what are you looking forward to, and what are you kind of going, oh, I didn't miss that? 
Uh, absolutely looking forward to the practice. Just being back in a team house, playing all day against the best players in the world. Uh, that's that's the reason I'm going. That's going to be awesome. Um, and then miss, I guess, the team house environment. The Korean team house environment isn't great. It's a lot of people in a pretty small space. Like the Slayer's house is one of the nicer ones, but it's still a lot of people in a small space. So you don't really have much privacy. You don't really, you're sacrificing personal life and all that for the game. And I'm ready to do that, but it's still a sacrifice. Well, if you're partnering with Team Slayers, there has been something made of a rivalry between you and Boxer. Are you excited to practice with him, or is there any rivalry there? I don't, I, I don't know. I think the whole concept of rivalry is kind of silly. I mean, we just played each other quite a few times, and he won some, I won some, and that's that. If people want to see a rivalry, they can, but I respect him a lot, and I'll be happy to play with him and learn from him. In general, would you say that's the case with the rivalries that people see in StarCraft, that it's more of a, a in-game rivalry than it really is a personal rivalry? In most cases, yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything that you would like to share with your fans, any ways that they can support you going into this next year, ways they can follow you, anything they can do? Um, most of the support should probably go through EG. Um, everything comes through them and our sponsors, so go to myeg.net, check out everything there. Uh, we have a lot of big things planned for the coming year, so just stay tuned for that. Me personally, you can follow me on Twitter at Idrigit. Uh I post most of the stuff I do. You can watch my stream through that, uh, idrigit.tv. Um, Mostly I'm in tournaments and practicing right now, so I haven't been doing too much of that, but maybe in the future. Um, and then, yeah, just big thanks to all our sponsors, Intel Steel Series, Monster, Kinks and HyperX, and um, Beyond Gaming. And I'd like to echo that thanks to Kinks and HyperX personally for bringing me here and allowing me to sit down with people like Idra and bring you this kind of content. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thank you.